It was the summer of 2014. I was 15 years old. I was staying at my friend George's house for the night. This was a common occurrence and I used to stay over there sometimes more than two to three times a week during the summer. After all, he was my best friend and we were kids so it was completely normal. George and his parents had lots of property behind their house. Probably like seven to eight acres, maybe more honestly. They had a huge barn, a cornfield, and some really cool trails in the woods we used to ride our dirt bikes and four wheelers in. I felt like a bad friend for this, but I didn't even know it was his birthday when I got there. After people started showing up and like more of his friends and family, I realized that he did tell me that today was his birthday a few weeks back. Oh man, I thought. I didn't get him a present. I immediately apologized to him and he took it very well. As a matter of fact, he told me he didn't want any birthday presents from his friends this year and that he wasn't expecting anything because of how good his parents spoiled him this year. That made me feel better, but I still felt guilty. We did everything that you would normally do for a 15 year old's birthday party. We had cake, open presents, and us kids spent some time playing outside with his new airsoft guns that he got for his birthday. He already had quite the collection of them, so we all had our own that we could play with. I won't go too deep into this part, but we decided we wanted to do teams. It was me, George, and Will. The other team had Evan, Scott, John, and Kyle. They had more people, but we had better guns. The whole gist of the game was to shoot them before we get shot. So we were all running around the trails frantically trying to get the other team down before they got us. After quite a few games and skip forward two hours or so, it was around 6.30 so the sun was starting to set. George and I agreed we should all go back inside and play some video games before everyone had to leave. But everyone else wanted to keep playing with the airsoft guns outside. Even though it was George's birthday, he was nice enough to let everyone vote on what we should do. It was apparent that we were going to be playing outside longer according to the votes, so that's what we did. We restarted the game, and we all had about two minutes to get set up and hide where we wanted to. George yelled, three, two, one, go. This time George and I were alone. We were pretty deep into the trails at this point, and he had me following him deeper into the woods. We ran all the way to this tree house that was built a long time ago. We climbed up there immediately. Are you sure they will even come back this far? I asked George. I mean, it's getting dark and I doubt they would even think that we would go this far. Yeah, they probably won't, he said, but if they do, they won't be able to get us before we get them. And plus, it'll be funny if they can't find us. As time went on, it got darker. Hey, George, we should probably go home. Just a few more minutes, he said. After all, it was his birthday, so I wanted to do what he wanted. Shh, do you hear that, George whispered? There was someone, or something walking quite close to us. We thought it was them, but we heard our friends yelling and talking further out into the distance, so we immediately ruled them out. Unless they were splitting up and trying to trick us, I whispered. Um, no. No offense to them, but none of them are smart enough to think of that, George said. Jeez, harsh, I said. He looked at me and kind of shrugged, and then he put his finger up to his mouth and said, Shh. Whatever was approaching us was getting closer. After a few moments of being quiet, we could finally see the tall, slender-looking shadow that stood before us. I don't think they can see us, I whispered. Shh, George said. Yeah, it definitely wasn't any one of our friends because whatever it was, was the size of a fully grown man and not a teenager. We stayed put, as quiet as possible. Thankfully, it was dark because from where the person was standing, it was evident they couldn't see us. The person started walking in the opposite direction now. The last bit of light that shined into the woods ever so lightly shined directly at the unknown person. They were wearing some sort of ghillie suit it looked like. George took no chances and jumped down as soon as the strange figure was out of sight. What are you crazy? I asked. He insisted I follow, so I did. I was scared, but I would have been more scared by myself, so that's why I went with him. We immediately ran a different way than the way we used to get there. He said he knew a better way back to the house and that there was a way through the cornfield that was parallel to the trails we were in. Almost immediately after jumping out of the treehouse though, the thing in what looked like a ghillie suit who we assumed to be a weird man heard us and started running towards us. We had a bit of distance between us and him and it was a good thing we were way faster because I don't know what would have happened to us or one of us had us not have been faster. We ran screaming the whole way back. Our friends must have realized that we weren't joking because they also started running towards us and made their way to us only a minute or two later. 
We all made it to my backyard and my dad must have heard us because he ran out with no shoes on at all to our rescue. George and I told him everything. My dad immediately called the police, but there wasn't much they could do since they couldn't find the man and since I couldn't give a description. The only thing I can really say is I will never be going back out into those trails ever again and I highly doubt George will either. This took place like 10 years ago. I was staying at Alex's house, who was my best friend at the time. It was just your average weekend of playing with Nerf guns, eating pizza, and drinking Mountain Dew while playing Call of Duty and Halo on Xbox Live all night. You know, pretty much what every kid did back in 2012. This is more of a mysterious kind of story, and I'm certain that most of the people I've told either think it's made up or that I'm crazy. But my friends and I know it's true. Ever since this night, I've 100% believed that there is such thing as the paranormal, or whatever you want to call it, but you know what I'm talking about. Like ghosts, demons, maybe not that exactly, but something bad and extremely disturbing. Something that we as humans can't comprehend yet. So we were upstairs in Alex's room, just me, him, and Sebastian. We were just having fun taking turns playing Halo and Call of Duty, since there were three of us and he only had two controllers. All of a sudden, Alex muted the TV and got us all to be quiet. Immediately, we all heard what sounded like someone screaming at the top of their lungs, like I have never heard before. It was a very demented, wailing sound that Alex said he hears sometimes. Keep in mind, it was 1 o'clock in the morning, on a dead-end street that only had one street light post on it. With a very small amount of light that we had to work with, we saw this silhouette of a super tall being sprinting like a deer across the street. The wailing sound diminished slowly as it got further away from us. What the heck was that, Alex? It's a ghost, he said. What do you mean a ghost? Come on, you saw that too. Now if you can sit here and lie to yourself and say that was a human or some sort of animal species that isn't known to man yet, then go ahead. But clearly that thing was no animal, and it definitely was not a human being. I don't know what it is. My guess is as good as yours. By this time, the strange skinwalker looking thing has completely vanished out of sight, and we couldn't hear anymore. Alex kept staring out the window though. He looked like he was about to go insane. Alex, hey bud, you okay? You should probably sit down and drink some water. He then started to cry. I guess the emotions of all this got to him and he couldn't control it so he started having a breakdown. Apparently this has been happening to him for years now and he doesn't know what to do and that no one else has seen it besides us three that he knows of, and that his parents won't believe him and that they think he's crazy. I think he was happy that after all these years someone else actually saw what he was talking about. Of course he didn't want us to see it because it traumatized us as well, but I think it gave him some sort of comfort knowing that it was real and he's not crazy. But maybe even more discomfort though, because knowing that it's real is downright terrifying. Apparently he still hears it from time to time, but he has chosen to completely ignore it. Nothing bad has happened yet, and we hope nothing bad ever happens at all. My parents were gone for the weekend, and so I decided to invite a friend over to stay the night. This was a couple years ago, and no I wasn't supposed to have anyone over while my parents were gone, but it was probably a good thing that I did. We were playing board games and card games all night just hanging out on our phones and enjoying each other's company and just talking about the most random stuff you could imagine. I think I was 16. Yeah, I had just turned 16. My friend was a year older than me, so she was 17. We weren't dating, she was just like a girl best friend of mine and her name was Hannah. I lived in a pretty nice house growing up, I'm not going to lie. My mom was a doctor and my dad ran his own pretty successful pressure washing business. And I was an only child, so I was pretty spoiled I guess you could say. I always wanted a brother or sister, but my parents couldn't have kids after me. They thought about adoption, but they never did. Anyways, it was like 9 o'clock when Hannah got there. My parents had already been gone for hours, so we were all set. My room was upstairs, and that's where we hung out for most of the time. When you walk out of my room, straight ahead are the stairs, parallel from my bedroom and my own personal bathroom across from the hallway. There was a huge overlook of windows that showed the whole entire backside of my house. I remember growing up, when I was really young, I always felt creeped out walking by it, especially at night when I was home alone. We had a pretty large backyard, with a pond, a playset, and a nice barn. Behind all that were trees, and I mean woods that go back for probably three or more acres. 
So if someone really wanted to, they could be spying on us and we would never know. Of course my parents had cameras, but there were a lot of blind spots. The cameras were infrared, but you could only see the shape and maybe an estimate of the height of what it was capturing, but obviously no specific details at night when it was dark. Not from that distance anyways. I wanted to take a shower, so I did. Hannah hung out downstairs in the living room and waited. After only a few minutes of being in the shower, Hannah ran upstairs screaming my name. Lucas, come here right now. There's someone outside in the backyard. Hurry, hurry up Lucas, I'm scared. I put my clothes on so fast and didn't even bother to dry off. I put my shoes on and I grabbed my rifle that was locked in my parents' safe in their bedroom. I closed all the blinds in the house and made sure all the windows and both doors were locked. We sat up in my bedroom with my rifle. She called the cops and I called my mom. The police were on their way. My parents were hours away, but they dropped what they were doing immediately and got here as fast as they could. I stayed on the phone with my mom the whole time, explaining what was going on. Then all of a sudden, it was the sound of a window shattering. Hannah screamed and ran into my closet. I was the one with the gun here, so I had to make sure we were safe. Even though I was terrified and my heart was beating out of my chest, I had to protect us. And in that moment, I knew what I had to do. I stepped out of my room and at the top of the stairs, I yelled, Hey! Get out of here, the police are on their way and I have a gun. If I see you at all, I'm going to shoot you. I heard loud banging underneath me, of which sounded like it came from the kitchen. I heard rustling throughout the whole house as he was searching through each room individually. He tried to break into my parents' safe, but to no avail thankfully. It probably would have been nothing less than a shootout had he been armed that night. He took some of my parents' valuables, like some expensive jewelry and a few other small things. He tried to run away shortly after, but the police arrived as he was running out. The whole thing unfolded right in front of my eyes. One of the officers tased him and they put him in cuffs. Apparently he had a warrant for his arrest for a separate break-in and armed robbery case. My parents have never let me stay home alone since and I don't ever want to stay home alone anyways. Not at that house at least.